Hello, my name is Peter Jacobsy from the University of California in Berkeley. Uh, I'm here at the uh, Wolfram uh, World Technology event to talk about uh, my research. It's focused on graphene nanoribbons, um, but, uh, and our aim is to make uh, electronic structures out of graphene nanoribbons that uh, can rival our current silicon-based technologies. But apart from my uh, more physical research, I'm also um, doing computational stuff. I'm, uh, trying to understand the electronic structure and the quantum mechanical structure of these nanoribbons. And that's what I'm going to talk about at this conference. Thanks. Uh, thank you for having me here. Thank you for the opportunity for me to talk here. Uh, my name is Peter Jacobsy. I'm from uh, the University of California in Berkeley. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, something completely different. I'm going to talk about graphene nanoribbons. Um, so, normally I would uh, do my presentation at a conference where there's an audience full of condensed matter physicists and scanning tunneling microscopy experts. Um, but today I'm at the Wolfram conference and uh, it's a really nice uh, challenge for me to also um, show, highlight uh, some of the more computational part of my research. Um, but also impart, hopefully, some enthusiasm for the experimental physics that I'm also doing. So I'm going to talk about graphene nanoribbons. You see an example of that here on the screen. Um, graphene nanoribbons are narrow strips of graphene. It's carbon atoms in a honeycomb arrangement. And uh, what's special about these materials is that um, we envision that they might, uh, at some point, even uh, compete with our silicon-based technologies. If we want to downscale everything, make everything even faster, even uh, more energy efficient, uh, at some point um, our silicon-based technologies will not be sufficient anymore and we need to switch to something else and we think that maybe this carbon-based approach um, can be very useful. All right. Um, so just to give a brief introduction, uh, I'm an experimental physicist um, from the Netherlands originally, um, started at the University of Groningen uh, in the north and then uh, did my PhD at Utrecht University. And uh, since the beginning of this year, I'm now at the University of California. And just to give you an impression, this is where I started. This is where I did my PhD, and this is where I'm currently with this beautiful view over the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, can I go a little bit further to the right? Because I had another button where I had the entire group. I don't think that's going to work, unfortunately. I had another image here uh, where you could see the entire uh, research group, the, the entire group of uh, Michael Cromie. Um, the main reason why I'm here is uh, not because of my experimental stuff, but because I developed a package called Mathematib. Um, and with that package, I'm able to actually do quantum mechanical uh, uh, calculations of the electronic structure of these graphene nanoribbons. So this is the package, and then we'll show some, ex of the, uh, some examples of what can be achieved with that package. Um, and I'm just going to load it in. Here it is. So it's loaded in. And this package is uh, freely available on the internet, so you can just look it up. Uh, I've published it uh, a while ago. Um, so just to give a brief introduction in graphene, um, I think it's quite well known already. All right, so that's the, that was the graphene paper. Let me show it again. It was uh, discovered uh, to in th 2007 by Gaiman Novoselov, and it's this two-dimensional honeycomb material, um, honeycomb arrangement of carbon atoms. And what they found specifically here, I have a model of the material, is that this uh, material doesn't only have this beautiful geometric structure, but it also has this beautiful electronic structure. In fact, it is. For its size, it has the, the highest conductance, uh, the, the best conductivity properties of, of every, any known material, basically. Um, 
the reason for that is, um, and now I'm going to go a bit into the quantum mechanics, but um, if, you, if you don't know so much about dispersions or so, then you just got to believe what I'm saying. Um, this is the dispersion of graphene, and you can see that this, you have these uh, points in the dispersion where you basically have these pencil tips touching uh, where the dispersion is locally linear. And that means, uh, to a physicist, it means that the particles at that energy behave as massless particles, and they go through the lattice almost unimpeded. Um, still, there are some problems with graphene. For example, it doesn't have an electronic band gap. Um, and that's why we want to go to graphene 2.0, and that's the graphene nanoribbons. So we nowadays have a beautiful method to make graphene nanoribbons. Uh, it was developed in this group by uh, Tsai and Fasel. And what they basically do, and what we have been doing since that paper is we select a certain molecule uh, with which we perform a chemical reaction on a surface. They polymerize and then at, when we heat them further, they generate these uh, atomically well-defined graphene nanoribbons. And there's many more examples of nanoribbons here, as you can see. So basically, you just select the right molecule and you get a specific type of graphene nanoribbon. Um, I'm going to skip over this, but uh, I think I made the point that different molecules give different ribbons and these give different properties. Let me show some of my own work. Um, actually, okay, I didn't make the zigzag nanoribbon, but they, that's a very special nanoribbon. I, I made this heterostructured nanoribbon where you have different widths and that, is, that has some interesting properties for uh, field effect transistor behavior. Uh, and nowadays, uh, we're also trying to use even more complicated molecules to make even more complicated graphene nanoribbons, which might in the future behave, uh, have, have very specific behavior, uh, maybe even geared towards magnetism or qubit behavior. Um, so I'm using MathematiB to look at the electronic structure of these ribbons. So you've seen a couple of images where I've shown the geometric structure, but uh, I'm usually working with a scanning tunneling microscope, and that is a piece of machinery uh, which also allows me to really uh, access the electronic structure of these nanoribbons. So um, this is an example. Um, here in panel C of this figure, this is a paper I, uh, I published a year ago, you can see some uh, images of the nanoribbons, which I took at different bias voltages, and that allowed me to look at different uh, orbitals, different wave functions inside these nanoribbons. So these are actually images of the quantum mechanical wave function inside a single graphene nanoribbon. That is what you can do with this scanning tunneling microscopy method methodology. And as you can see, there's also panel B, and you see basically the same patterns there, and that is the wave function as I calculate it with my uh, MathematiB package. Um, another thing that we can do, so what I've also done is with the tip of the scanning tunneling microscope, I've lifted off graphene nanoribbons from the surface with atomic precision, and in that case, you can look at the conductance of the, through the nanoribbons. Um, here in panel D, you see the experimental conductance, but also with tight binding with the, this method, I can also calculate the conductance through the single graphene nanoribbons, just based on the laws of quantum mechanics. Um, this is something else. So I've helped my co-workers with a different project. This is not nanoribbons, but this is carbon monoxide molecules on, on, on copper. But also here, they were able to look at wave functions, and you can see some wave functions experimentally in A, B, and C. And in, in panel D, E, and F, you see my calculations with my uh, type binding package. Um, and recently, I've made these two-dimensional nanoribbon, these interconnected nanoribbon structures. Um, and also, uh, what's interesting about these structures is that we have for example, these interface localized states, 
which I can then simulate with MathematiB um, and I can simulate the projected dispersion, local density of states, wave functions, and, and that's all pretty convenient. Yeah? This one. Okay, so if you look at panel E, you see a rectangle and you just count the number of atoms within that rectangle. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do something. All right, I didn't delete this before testing. All right, we're gonna do something. I'm actually gonna do a calculation in real time and it should be relatively fast. So I made this graphical user interface where I can just import a file, a molecule file, um, and I have some, some uh, optional arguments here. I'm gonna set these to true. And And then it should be on this computer, uh, if I can still find it. Right, I have an example molecule here, and then plotting this molecule is as easy as using the function molecule plot, which I implemented, and then soon after my paper was accepted, um, then I got the news of uh, Mathematica version 12 also having the functionality molecule plot, so I hope it won't clash, but I think it should be fine. All right. And this is the first time I'm doing this in version 12, so I'm, I think it might be doing something weird. All right, anyway, so what you then do is you Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out. Like, I'm, I'm gonna need to specify the context or, um, I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but, um, yeah. Yeah, so I haven't done this with version 12 before and I'm gonna fix that so that it doesn't clash with the new definition of molecule plot. Um, Anyway, so building a Hamiltonian is, is as easy as using the function build Hamiltonian. And then I'm, I'm really a bit disappointed that I can't show these, uh, these molecules in real time, but in principle, I would also be able to show you in real time how I can get a, a, a whole load of uh, orbital plots, for example. And that's just a matter of, I can do that within one minute. All right. Um, but uh, you have to believe me and just look at the examples and it, um, and you can trust me that in a future version I will uh, deal with this, uh, this clash. So I have some more examples of results. All right. Yeah, it worked in version 11. No, I don't. This is not my laptop. Uh, okay, uh, I need to look into that. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you a few uh, examples that don't require me to do the calculation right now. Uh, examples that I've done earlier. And actually, actually, I've just copy pasted these examples from the tutorial that I've written. Uh, so when I developed this package, I've written a very extensive tutorial, 170 pages, so there's plenty of documentation. Um, and uh, here in the top, you can just see uh, what molecule plots should do if you just select a, uh, a couple of different settings. Um, you can see an example of using different basis functions. So it has implementation uh, for SMP uh, type orbitals. Uh, you see an example of a, a levels plot where you can just visualize electronic levels and, and, and where the spin up and spin down uh, channels are and which levels are occupied. And here I have an example of iso surface plot, 
where you can visualize the electron density uh, at a certain isosurface of this molecule. Um, I have a mm, few more examples, so example of nanoribbons. So here I have uh, an example of a, a basis change uh, where I went from one basis to a symmetrized basis using the, um, uh, so where I uh, use a new basis to calculate the electronic structure of these nanoribbons. And you can see that in the dispersion diagram uh, on the bottom right, where you see the dispersion in terms of the uh, symmetry groups of the wave function. So that's kind of special. Um, and also the uh, charge density distribution inside a graphene nanoribbon where I just ex exchanged some hexagon uh, rings with uh, heptagon and pentagons. And also you can see some analytical forms of the Hamiltonian for a few uh, sample system. Um, and what is what called? Uh, some people call it 5-7 graphene, some people, there, there's like few names for graphene allotropes, it's called hecolite or uh, fa graphene, I think. So you could just uh, gotta look into the literature. A, a few final examples, so here you see uh, examples of dispersion plot 2D um, uh, of, of uh, different lattices with different atoms. Uh, here you see a, a, a few orbital plots of graphite, so the three-dimensional uh, material. Um, the density of states of one, two, and three-dimensional change uh, chains of atoms, or, or cubic lattices. Uh, you see a few orbital plots of the electronic leap lattice. Um, and you see the dispersion uh, the in, in, uh, in Ke space of uh, of a Kagame honeycomb lattice, which is uh, very interesting for metal organic frameworks. And the Mathematic B logo itself is actually the dispersion of uh, a square octagonal lattice. Um, all right, so in conclusion, the Mathematic B package uh, allows me to explore the electronic structure of graphene nanoribbons, or, and nowadays even more because I completely generalized it to allow any kind of input, uh, and as you have seen, it's a, a tool uh, for doing quite quick uh, calculations. You haven't seen the full power of that yet. I wanted to do this in real time, but I ran into some difficulties, but in principle, I would be able to do that in real time. But at the same time, I can also, public, uh, I can also uh, get a publication-worthy data out of it. Um, so it's more general now. It's available to the general public because I published it. Uh, so if you just look up uh, Mathematibi or if you look up my name, you'll surely be able to, to find it. Um, with that, I would like to do some acknowledgement. And here you finally still get to see the Chromie group. Uh, so these are my, uh, my colleagues. Um, I acknowledge uh, the financial support from the Dutch Research Council, um, but also uh, my former colleagues from Utrecht University, where I started developing this, uh, this Mathematibi uh, package, and also from uh, collaborators of other groups in, in Berkeley. And you, of course, for listening to my talk. <laughs>